costs. Now, in order to implement earned value, of course, we do have to have um, some uh, prerequisites, if you will. And those prerequisites are listed here. And I'll just review some of them. First of all, we want to make sure that we are enabling the integration of cost schedule and technical performance. So in this sense, what I'm meaning here is that if in our program office we have Joe responsible for cost and Mary's responsible for schedule and Bob's responsible for technical, having it split up into functional silos is not a formula for success. We have to have a single belly button to push because of that priority triangle. These are interrelated, and a single individual must be responsible for cost schedule and technical performance of any scope of work. Naturally, in order to put some credible plans together, we have to have well-organized estimates of cost and schedule. We're not going to just measure activity. We need to have sound technical performance measures and quality standards that are established to help us define when the work is completed. As we said before, this is where earned value answers part of the question, we need objective and technical based measures of progress. Those are your earned value methods. We need to have the accounting of our expenditures, in other words, the resources we use. We've got to be able to keep track of those in an official book of record in an accounting system. They can also be related to the work breakdown structure. We naturally need to be able to compare our performance against our plan. That's where we get our variances from, to be able to do impact studies and corrective action plan. And of course, if we have a historical record like this, of all of our prior programs and investments, that provides the mechanism for us to make realistic estimates uh, going forward uh, for our future programs. So there have been some uh, uh, significant activity within the departments and agencies for implementing this. Here we show you kind of a before and after picture. So the graphic indicates uh, a table. And of course, uh, what's not important is the names of the rows or columns. But essentially, the columns are the 32 guidelines of the earned value standard. That's what you have laid out. The rows are the major programs. So this particular agency had about 35 major programs. And those programs were assessed for their compliance with the 32 guidelines. And you can see in the beginning we had a lot of red, meaning you're not compliant. Four yellows indicating partial compliance. The green indicates that the program complied with that particular guideline of the earned value standard. We can look at that chart and you can just count, well, out of 35, it looks like there's maybe three or four of them that are in good shape. The others have some work to do in terms of maturing their management system so that it actually complies with the earned value standard. Well, that was about four years ago. The after picture is down below. After all the hard work that the agency went through to mature and develop their management approach for each of their major programs. And you can see that it is practically green across the board. Some of the yellow columns there are corporate systems. In other words, not the responsibility of the program office, but corporate systems, typically the accounting systems, that aren't quite there yet in terms of their ability to support this approach. So there are some challenges. You know, certainly in order to do this well, we need standard work breakdown structures. We need to make sure that we not only can associate our resource consumption with the general ledger to produce a financial statement, but we also have to associate the resources used to the cost within the project. In other words, to the work breakdown structure. And some of our government accounting systems are not quite there yet in being able to do that. We also must be able to plan and monitor the performance of our government resources. So that means that government resources, at least those that are working on capital investment programs, would have to complete timesheets and lay out their work uh, accomplishment in the same way that a contractor would. We have to have some discipline around our program rebase lines. And of course, uh, the IT dashboard has done a lot to improve the last one in terms of having transparency in what our performance is across the major investments. So in wrapping up and summarizing, uh, we have here just a table, if you will, that gives you 
some of the features and attributes of traditional program management that laid out here in the columns. And then the far column on the, on the far right kind of gives you those additional things that are available to you if you adopt an earned value approach. Both are program management. One is using the earned value technique for statusing your work and all of the new metrics and capabilities that you can gain as a result of using that approach when comparing it to the traditional approach. So in summary, we kind of introduced the earned value approach here. It sources from how do you status your in-process work. You don't use one of the three evils. You try to use this independent objective method. That gives you the ability to have a uh, definition of Variance, what didn't you do that you were supposed to do, which then enables the use of efficiencies to project future performance. So this time we'd like to go ahead and open it up to any uh, contributions that uh, participants have, uh, be they questions or observations or otherwise. So what we'd like to do, um, we've opened up um, for the audience view your ability to go ahead and submit any questions. Uh, you can type those right in, um, and then we will uh, kind of take them in the order that they're received uh, to provide any clarification for some of the topics we've, we've reviewed. Would you save money using EVM? All right, so we've had a couple of questions submitted. That's great. And if you have any other thoughts or some in mind, by all means, uh, continue to uh, submit those as well. Uh, first question is, has there been a change in how firm fixed price work efforts are treated with respect to earned value management? 
And if so, why? Well, initially when Earn Value was uh, conceived and developed uh, within the U.S. Air Force and then adopted by DOD, uh, originally it was only used to manage contracts. In other words, only used to manage the work delegated to a contractor. And primarily it was used on cost reimbursable contracts because the assumption was those contracts had the most risk associated with them. In other words, a supplier would never propose or sign up to do work under any other conditions and cost reimbursable because it had so much risk. Um, so initially the earned value approach was, was solely used on contracts and in particular cost reimbursable contracts. As we move through the acquisition reform and deregulation uh, that was prevalent during the 90s, uh, there certainly was more of a um, promotion of the government, the customer, the buyer, using other contracting um, uh, terms such as time and materials and firm fixed price or firm fixed price incentive fee that put a little bit more of the risk on the contractor as opposed to having the customer solely responsible for cost overruns and performance issues which would have be been the issue with uh, cost reimbursement. So in essence, we do have a, a, a number of different contract types that are used in today's environment. And effectively, what that does is it, it doesn't necessarily change the amount of risk associated with an undertaking, but rather it shifts who's responsible for the risk based on the terms and conditions of the contract. OMB's position since around 2004 has been pretty clear that the only thing that should govern whether earned value is used is the type of work. If it's development, modernization, or enhancement work, where you're trying to do, implement a new capability uh, for an organization, for an enterprise, then it's a good approach. It doesn't really matter what the contract type is. It doesn't really matter who is carrying the risk. Um, firm fixed price puts the cost risk on the contractor, but obviously the customer still carries a significant amount of the schedule. So there is a difference in terms of how it has been treated uh, and where it is applied. Uh, most federal agencies have adopted uh, policies that will employ this technique um, on both cost reimbursable, time and materials, and firm fixed price contracts. Of course, the red herring there in terms of a firm fixed price contract is, well, the contractor is not obligated to tell you what their costs are. Well, I'm not sure that the reporting requirements even require that. Um, the answer is that the cost is reported at the price level. And the price level is defined as that firm fixed price, of course, by clean or subclean that's laid out within the contract. So that's at least a little bit of insight into uh, that. Um, we talk about this uh, extensively during our public training in terms of how you would apply it in the different contract All right, so another question was about how do you recommend planning to create a baseline in a government EVM environment? Uh, and then how long after award should a baseline review take place? So the um, planning to create a baseline in the government EVM environment, typically you will do that prior to going to your investment review board to have your capital investment approved. So you might have initially, while you're in the planning phase, a, a draft of your Exhibit 300, which would have a preliminary baseline, but certainly not a final one, until you actually get approval within your department or agency's investment review board. And the planning for that, I mean, it, Usually agencies establish approaches, all of which are driven by the requirements in E11. The timelines and how that is done is usually department or agency specific. It can range anywhere in terms of six months to three months uh, prior to actually going for the review board approval and having that baseline established. Um, the baseline, of course, would be uh, would govern during the acquisition phase. Uh, and that's the period of time which we would typically use the earned value approach. Uh, earned value is a best practice in terms of using it during the planning phase, working up to that investment decision. 
Um, it is not an absolute requirement until you are actually in the acquisition phase and doing the development, modernization, enhancement, or DNE type work. Well, once you do have uh, an investment decision, and then usually subsequent to that, a contract award, you do typically schedule what's called a baseline review, otherwise known as an integrated baseline review, or an IBR. The IBR is typically within around 60 to 120 days after your contract award. The primary reason for that is when you go in to validate the baseline, you would like to have some performance information available to you during that review. If you do it immediately after contract award, you'll have no execution or performance information to use to try and validate uh, is the management system working correctly and is the baseline feasible. So clearly you don't want to delay it too far because now you're executing against the baseline that you haven't confirmed. So my experience has been it's usually within around 60 to 120 days. Uh, that can also be a set based on agency or department policy. We have one last question uh, which talks about how would you use EVM with the way OMB is now pushing modular deliverables? And of course, modular deliverables, especially in the software development arena, are critical uh, to a successful implementation. We all know that software has long ago left the Big Bang Theory behind. That's not the way to do it. We want to break it down. We want to use spiral techniques and agile techniques in order to develop our software so we get immediate feedback cycled into the development uh, team as rapidly as possible to begin to own in on exactly what the customer wants as far as that system initiative. Um, there is nothing inconsistent about using an EDM approach to status or determine how much work has been done in an agile or modular deliverable type of environment. It all comes down to the method that we select, the frequency that we use for determining how much work has been done, and how we take credit or work accomplishment. Um, I would say that you need to use these approaches as you take forward your, your system engineering approach to information technology projects, and EBM is entirely consistent with that. It is a, an approach that allows for change, that encourages change. Um, however, it's not just change that is completely uncontrolled. Uh, um, we do want to understand the change that is occurring, and there is a naturally an approval process and a recording or documentation of those changes as appropriate. But the use of things like summary level planning packages and planning packages within an urban value management system strongly promote the notion of rolling wave planning and not detail planning everything out on day one to the point that you're locked into a baseline that is not executed. There are many ways that you can tailor and develop your management system to accommodate uh, these more agile development methodologies. Well, I think that's, um, at least from what I've seen, um, the extent of the questions that we had submitted. Um, if you'd like more information or want to further explore earn value as a project management technique, uh, we do offer training, and you can see that probably up on your screen at this point in time. Uh, there are some local classes here that are scheduled within the next several months in the Washington, D.C. area, and you've got a website there that you can access uh, and, and uh, get additional information. Well, thanks every much, everyone for joining us and spending this uh, hour this afternoon exploring your value. I hope it's been useful and, and insightful to you in terms of beginning to understand what it is. Uh, and how it, in fact, is just a technique within the broader discipline of program management. And I uh, appreciate your time and uh, look forward to meeting you and, and possibly working with you in the future. Thank you again and have a great afternoon.